that generally only did that on the top, top of the line saws. So even if you find one with a rusty plate that looks like garbage, um, you, you probably can find a, a good saw underneath all the rust. The thing you need to look for if you're buying a, a used saw is to make sure you sight down the saw and the saw blade is absolutely straight. You don't want one that has kinks and stuff in it. They're, they can be really hard to get out. If they have a little one, you can flex the saw and pop. Oftentimes it'll pop the kink right out when you do that. This, these are all made of something called spring steel. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to point out the other kind of saws, which were most of us are familiar with their back saws, which are jointery saws. And that's the difference. And they're very, very fine teeth. This one has about uh, 15 or 16 teeth per inch. So this saw has as many teeth on it as this one or more maybe. These are really difficult to sharpen um, because they're so time consuming. The teeth are so tiny. And so you have to use magnifiers when you're do working with these saws to sharpen them. Okay, any question about saws that you'd like to know about? Okay, well, let me stick this stuff in the box and grab the sharpening. Okay, so the sharpened saws, well, let's see. Okay, well, I, I, yeah, let's, let's go to this first. Let's first, we'll, we'll talk about the different parts of a saw too. The, the handle end is called the heel and the, the far end that you push your saw towards is called the toe. Okay. And so the sheet, the, the sheet metal is called the plate. And of course you have your teeth. And so there's a, <clears throat> let's go to the PowerPoints. I want to talk about the different kinds of teeth. That looks good. Next slide. There we go. Okay. So you have two different kinds of teeth, the crosscut tooth and the rip saw tooth. And what I want to point out is that the difference in these teeth is two, two things. One is the angle. When you, when you cut the teeth in a, in a saw, they're cut with a triangular file that's 60 degrees on each of the points of the file. So the, the angle between the points is always 60 degrees. But if you notice from the picture, the crosscut tooth has teeth that are shaped like little pointy knives and the rip saw teeth are shaped like little chisels. They're filed straight across and ripped saw and at an angle in the crosscut to get the pointy teeth. Okay, next, next slide. Okay, there's a question. Is the steel SL pretty comparable between brands, Viston and Stanley Nicholson? Okay, um, the, the Stanley stuff is generally, that was a later, when Stanley got into saws, that was a later development. Um, their saws were lower, usually lower cost than Distin and some of the other makers um, like Simons. And the uh, older distant, older uh, distance are probably much better saws than the Stanley. Stanley's oftentimes were made by people like Distin, but they use thicker plates in the saw plate. And the saw is generally um, more of a uh, rough cutting 
saw is not a fine uh, quality, high quality saw. We're trying to change cameras here. You are recording, aren't you? Yes. Okay. And then I need to go to the to the PowerPoint. PowerPoint? Yeah. Hey, Ken. Yeah. Um, I have a, a little panel saw that's called a Keen Cutter. Is that a, a, a notable brand or is it just a... It says Keystone? Keen. Those were, no, what was Keen, it? Keen Cutter, I believe is what it is. Oh, Keen, Keen Cutter. Okay. Keen Cutter was a, a brand that um, was from the Midwest in the early part of the 1900s, I believe, was when they started. And yeah, they were generally made least. by other companies uh, with that brand on them. So okay. I don't know much about that, but they're very collectible because they're people that collect king cutter tools. Um, they, made, they branded all kinds of, of tools. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so here's a, here's a slide that shows how things are sharpened in the two different ways. You'll notice that the rip saw the diagram shows the, the file going perpendicular to the saw plate. That's with the saw being vertical behind the picture. And when you tilt the, the edge of the file, you want to have the leading edge of the teeth you're filing somewhere between eight and zero degrees of what's called rake, that hook angle. And that, if you, have it at zero degrees so that it's a, the tooth is per, straight up and down. You have a very rough cutting, hard to push saw. If you tip the angle between four and six degrees, um, you get a very smooth cutting rip saw that's relatively easy to start. But if it's a vertical tooth, it's like having a bunch of, of um, uh, scrapers that you're trying to drag across um, the surface of the wood when you're cutting. So if you tip it a little bit, it, it tends to cut much better. Now you'll notice on the cross cut saw at the bottom, the, the file is across the, the plate at an angle. And that angle can change between 15 and 20 degrees. And you'll notice that the, the saw, the file is also canted in the, the uh, tooth gullet to more like 15 degrees. And that gives it by doing the, the angle across the plate and tilting it a little bit more, you end up with these um, chisels or knife pointy teeth. Next slide. Okay. okay. This is a very uh, full packed diagram, but I want to talk about it because it gives you the terminology of, of uh, saw filing. The top line is talking about rake, which is the twisted angle of the file in the gullet. And you can have negative rake, which or zero, which is perpendicular, which would be for, for um, um, you're, you're basically, you, you could be a rip saw would be good there. If you had zero on a, on a um, cross cut saw with the pointy teeth, what would you end up with is something that would just sort of tear its way through the world. And fleam is, is the next line on the chart. And it's the angle at which the, the saw, the, the file is held relative to the saw plate in a horizontal way. And the, uh, Slope is the next thing you can your file could be either be held purpose when you hold the saw plate vertical that you can fi have your file either file uphill level or downhill and that will change the way your gullets are formed and that there's some tricks with that but most of the time the filing is done just horizontally and the other thing that changes is pitch You've got coarse pitch, which means you're going to have deeper gullets, um, more pressure per tooth, harder to start, faster cutting, leaves a lot of tool marks, and finer pitch, less pressure to, 
deeper tooth, yield smoother cutting, easier starts, finer cut marks. Many, many small teeth to be difficult to sharpen. And then you have the, uh, the gullet depth, which is related to how far down you, or how the size of the file you're using. If you use a file with large corners, you get short gullets and lots of room to pull sawdust out. Or if you use pointy ones, then you're, you get uh, a finer pitch in your teeth. And then the set, which is the teeth are not when on the saw are not um, just straight up and down on the plate. They've been pushed over to one side or the other. As you notice in the diagram, the wiggle waggle on the right side of the diagram, that um, that that will uh, uh, increase the size of the the curve that the saw is cutting and lets your saw slide more easily in the cut. But you don't want to have it too big. If there's too much set on something, what happens is the saw rattles in the, in the groove and doesn't necessarily cut straight. So you, you have to have a, a compromise of, between enough and, and uh, too much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so where did I go to? Oh, okay, this over here. So, rip teeth, like, oh, let's get the big rips out. You want to give me a close up on this blend? Okay, now on rip teeth, You'll notice that uh, this, yeah. Yes. There you go. Okay, you can notice that as you look across the saw, you can't really see the filed portion of the teeth until I tip it down. That's because these are filed straight across. And so they're very pointy and this saw cuts very fast. Now I'm gonna switch with the cross cut saw And you can see that here you can see the shiny parts of the, the teeth where the file has been filed at an angle and it creates the points on the teeth. Okay. So that's the, for the cross cut. Okay, so, okay, now let's go to talk about files. You'll see the rack that I got here of all the different files that, that are used in, in sharpening. They go everywhere from a triangular needle file. Uh, okay which you can notice compared to my fingers, this is a tiny little file. There we go, okay. And we compare that one with this file, which is, yeah, there we go, which is a six inch, this happened to be a six inch, what's called a, um, um, God, try thing. Three, uh, three cornered file. And this, this file is a specialized kind of, of uh, extra smooth file. But here's, here's one that's equivalent for the sharpening these large tooth saws. It's a seven inch extra slim taper. These things come in different sizes that are called regular, slim, extra slim, and double extra slim. And they come in a huge range. If you can point me back at well here, no, I got, I can bring set this up. Well, they come in a big range of sizes. You can get an idea here of of how much these things um, change in size depending on which which one you're you're using. And so you, you you match these up with the different size teeth, and the way you determine 
when you have the right file is you set the file in the tooth. Okay, that's good. And then you look and see, and if you look at the tooth that the, is on, the file is on top of, you'll see that it only goes about halfway up the side. That means this file is the right size for this because this way you can turn the file another third and it, you're using all new pieces or you turn it one more third and you're using all new sharpening edges. So by using a file that's twice as wide as a tooth is high, you can use all four sides on your file, all three sides on your file without um, getting to the most efficient use. If you use a, you could use a smaller file to sharpen this tooth. You'll see that it, it goes as high as the top, but you're wearing out two whole sides at the same time, the complete side. So this file would last about half as long or a third as long as this file to do the same sharpening on this saw. So that's the reason you need, you need lots of different kinds of files if you're going to sharpen lots of saws. Um, I want to talk about one of the ways you can get saw files. This is a product that's sold by, by uh, Lee Valley. Um, it's a holder for your saw files and they sell it with a whole selection of, of files in the thing for a fairly decent price. Um, the one thing about saw files is they're not exactly easy to buy. You can't go to the hardware store and buy a saw file that's worth paying money for. Um, you won't find anything at Home Depot that's, that's worth even picking it off the shelf. Um, the reason is, is that the saw files used to be made by the Nicholson company in the US. And when they moved all their operations to Mexico, their saws, their, all their files stopped um, having the proper hardness and they don't last very long at all. So they'll work, but they'll probably last you about a third of the time of a, of a good saw file. The, the, uh, there are very few good places to get them, but uh, I was gonna get to my notes here where I put that. Anyway, there's, there was on the, okay, good, good brands are Baco, Gourbet and Karate. Um, then the antique, if you find any antique files in uh, junk stores and stuff, look for Nicholson or Simon's files. Um, they're worth, worth buying if you find good quality used ones, ones that aren't worn out. The current suppliers are, of saw files are Lee Valley, Tools for Working Wood in New York City, and Bad Axe Tool Works and other saw makers. There are a whole bunch of people um, now that are making really high quality saws. Um, there's a guy on, Bain, on uh, one of the islands north of Seattle that's doing it. Um, and there's a bunch of other people around. So the other file you need for sharpening saws is a flat bastard file, a short one, six or eight inches is fine. And this is used to flatten the tops of the teeth and bring them all into alignment before you sharpen them. Because the worst thing about a saw is to have uneven heights on your teeth. When that happens, one tooth will hang up and it gets very hard to push. It's very hard to go straight. So you, I'll show you later, but you run the file down the tops of the teeth, create a little flat on top of them all to get them all the same level. And then you sharpen the teeth until that flat goes away. So what else do we need here? So talked about jointers. You can you can buy a, a fancy metal holder from Lee Valley for joining your files, or you can make a little one with two pieces of wood that holds the file perpendicular to a surface so that you can join it. And these are also great for sharpening scrapers. Then let's see, you need a saw set. The saw set, these are two 
Stanley saw sets that are highly regarded. This one is a 42 and it is good for heavy, for coarse tooth saws like this one. And this one is a 42X and it's, it's the most used saw file or saw set on the market um, and the most desirable. And it's, it's uh, got a really fine pin in it and it will set foot saws as fine as, as these. So with a little bitty teeth. So you need a saw set. You can also buy um, this. If you can't find a used one, you can buy the Somax um, saw set. This is the, the one I recommend. There's, it comes in a, a fine tooth and a coarse tooth version. Okay. And this one happens to, this happens to be a fine tooth and it's blue. The, uh, I believe the, the coarse tooth one is gray. These work almost exactly like the, the Stanley ones do functionally, but they're, they're the only currently available saw set that, that currently manufactured saw set that's worth paying money for. And I should warn you um, too, if there's hundreds of used saw sets out there um, that were created for all different kind of crazy saws that they used to have in the woods and everywhere else. And you want to stay away from them. <laughs> Most of them aren't designed for using on hand saws. Okay, so what else do you need to sharpen saws? Well, one of the, the most valuable things is a two power magnifier that you can put over your glasses so you can actually see the teeth on the little bitty saws or any of them. It makes it a lot easier to see if you're doing a good job or not. Uh, it's a Somax, S-O-M-A-X. And I believe it's sold by several of the, of the woodworking suppliers. I can't remember if anyone does or doesn't sell it at the moment, but it is readily available. Okay, so where are we? Okay. Well, let's go um, figure out and watch how to, oh, one more tool you need, which I want to show you is a saw vise. Um, I brought in two. This one is a saw vise that I constructed. Actually, I brought in several of them. This one is, is one that I constructed from a kit from Texas Heritage in, uh, and they sell you all the metal parts and the plans, or they also, they also, at least they used to actually sell the whole thing put together, but I'm not sure if he's doing that anymore. He's got, he also makes some absolutely beautiful leather work and he makes tool rolls, he and his wife. So this one just mounts in the vise and you can pry it apart with your fingers and you, can set the saw in there. And uh, let's run it up first to show you what, how you do, do the first step of joining. This is another saw um, vise. This one clamps onto a workbench and it tilts and it has a lever that opens and closes the vise parts. Okay, the disadvantage of of a vise that's this wide is that you have to move most of your saws many times to use this because you've got to keep the teeth in the vise so that they don't vibrate too much while you're sharpening them. But these will work fine for smaller saws. <clears throat> now, if you don't, don't want to make a fancy vise, you can make one like this, which is really pretty simple. It's two pieces of plywood with a 
eighth inch piece of plywood screwed on the bottom for a hinge, or you could put hinges if you wanted to do that. The boards nailed to the side are to keep it from dropping too low in your vise. And then you can open it up like that put your saw in it and just drop it in your vise and squeeze it tight. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to move your saw to sharpen from one end to the other. And if, when you get to the second stage, there's two stages in sharpening your saw because you sharpen every other tooth. You have to turn it end for end generally because you can't usually get to the other side of the vise and then sharpen the other way. This way you don't have to take it out of the the vise. And you can make this kind of vise in a smaller version. So you can make one for your smaller saws. Okay. There are plans for these all over the place. They're not, they're pretty common. Okay, so how do we sharpen a rip saw? Well, the first thing you'll notice about, is this one? Yeah, yeah. This saw is it's marked with little black dots on some of the teeth. memory card? Yeah. Recover memory card? Yeah, I'll go to the other camera. Wow. Yeah. Okay, excuse us for the technical details. <laughs> okay. I don't know how well you can see it, but every other tooth along the, the top here is got a little black dot on it. And I, what you do is you take a marker and you put a dot on every tooth that points away from that side. And then you go to the other side of the saw and do the same thing on that. The reason for that is that you, when you're sharpening, you always sharpen on the back face of the file, the tooth that points away from you. So the first step is actually, I got the blade up high in the, here we go, here's the shot for the, <clears throat> see the teeth that are pointing away are all marked. So the first step is I take the, yeah, take the saw um, and it's, okay. take the joint, the saw and the joining holder and you just run it down the top of the teeth from the rear to the front. Can you pan across the top of the teeth? Okay. So if you'll notice, as it goes to the front of the saw here, these teeth are almost half the size of the teeth in the center of the saw. This, tooth, this saw has a really unique character in that the front four inches has smaller teeth so that it's easier to start. And it's one of the tricks that saw, good saw makers will do to their saws. They'll, they'll put some teeth at the front that make it easy to cut. They may even change the way they're pitched so that they don't, they don't have as much power, but you put all your power in between the handle and about six inches from the toe. Because you don't want to ever pull the tip of your saw out of your kerf. So anyway, so you run the, run the file down the tip. And I hope you can hear the noise. And now I want to show you what that's done. Um, yeah, if we can get that. Yeah, let's see. 
our focus. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I guess you can't really. Yeah, there you can almost see the little light squares on the tips. See the light where the light shines? It's fuzzy, but that's what this what the joiner has done. It's it's cut little flats on the top of some of the teeth. Now this particular saw has been sharpened, so there aren't there isn't very much variability in this. So after you join it, and there's two reasons for joining it. One is you want the saw, the line of saw teeth to not have a belly. You want it to always be a hump or flat. And the reason for that is if there's a belly in it, it makes it very difficult for the teeth at the back to, to cut. They, there's a part that's going to miss. They're not going to teeth. The teeth in the middle of the curve are not going to cut as deeply as the ones at either end. It's, the saw is going to run really funny. So you do your joining, you get your flats. And so then you, Ken, mm -hmm. a question on the joining. Do you want to do it so you have the same amount of flat on all the teeth or you're just trying to no, get a little you're, bit? You're trying to get them to all have a flat. Okay. Okay. Um, the only time you'd ever want to do something that you where you'd say oh, I want to get it sort of all the same you you can't the the reason that you do it is to make the teeth after you sharpen it all the same height so um, what you're doing then is taking away on either side of one of the top the tips the same amount of material so that you get the the each of the gullets to be the same depth and the tips at the same height Okay, now so how do you figure out how am I going to hold this file? Well, if we're doing a rip tooth, I put it in the the slot, and it's for me. It's the the third tooth here is the one that's pointing away from me. So I put the file behind it into the slot, and this particular one. Now this. Oh, I know why that does does that. Let's. I'm using the other file. So, so the file fits in the slot and then you're just going to line it up and then you put a file guide and the file guide is, does two, there's two things it does for you. When you stick it on the end of the file, and this, this happens to be a really great guide from Veritas, probably the best one out there on the market because you can stick the file in the, in the gullet, level up the, the metal, shiny metal part so that it's parallel with the, the ground. And what that does for you, and there's a screw at the bottom to tighten the, the lateral adjustment, and that is set your, your file to the proper dip, the depth, the same depth that the teeth were cut by the previous person that cut them. And then you can adjust your, this little guy here has a scale and you can adjust it to zero, which is you, means that you're going to file straight across. And then you stick the file now in the gullet you want to open. You've got a little handle at the back to help you control the, the twist. So you can, you, this little flat on the handle is now parallel with the, the metal guard. And so when you bring it across the, the saw in the gullet, you can hold it at the right angle. And then you just go to the next one, you skip a tooth and do that. Yeah, I could try the other camera. So this gives you an idea what sort of what you have to do to do this. You, you're holding, you're pinching the, the guide between your finger, your thumb and one of your fingers, your index finger. You're sticking the file in the notch 
behind the, the tooth pointing away from you and you're just pushing straight across. And that tooth got one more because it had more flat. Okay, so now I've sharpened that side of, the, of the, the saw, so I have to take it out of this vise. I could turn the vise around too, but this is the easier way for this at this point. Put it back in the other way around and starting at the rear, holding the file at the same angle. Let's see now. This, this file was, was set at, um, that is a strange angle. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so now I have to change the, comp the angle to the complement of what it was on the other side. And so on the back of this thing, there's a scale and I we just went, it's, it goes plus or minus, there's zero over here, zero over here. We can't, we can't see it. You're off the you camera with there. it. Yeah. So let's see here. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. See the scale, and it should have it. It's at fit, set at fifteen degrees, and uh, and it was set at fifteen degrees on the other direction before. So now I'm gonna. And so on, and when you finish, you end up with all the teeth lined up and sharpened. Ken, when you started, I, I think you said this was a rip saw. Is this rip or cross? Oh, yeah, and I, I think this is, yeah, I think I actually picked up the wrong one. But yeah, this is the cross cut. That's why it was doing it such at the 15 degree angle. I think I may turn this one into a rip saw anyway, because I don't want to five point cross cut. So it's, but basically I've got this one started straight across. So, yeah. If, if you're doing a rip saw, why do you have to switch to the other side? Couldn't you- well, the, reason, the reason you do it- the, same side? the reason you do it is, yeah, cause this is, this is the rip saw here. The reason you do it is um, it, give, it makes the teeth have better sh a, a, a sh better angle because you're. I'll show you here. It's it's. Uh, okay. All right. Now if. Okay, there we go. Okay. So here I'm in a file 
that's the one where I'm filing on top of the, the file pointing away. Now I'm gonna, gonna file on the next tooth. And you can do this this way, because that's the way I've done it in the past before. But you can you hear the squeal there. If you file in one direction, you get more squeal than if you do in the other way. And you actually get sharper teeth by alternating it. But for, it's not as critical for rip saws, that's for sure. And when you're doing one like this, it's really difficult to keep track of where you're going, these little, little teeth. So one of the ways you, you fix that is there's a product called layout fluid or die cam. And this stuff is, this happens to be, it comes in red and blue. And you buy this on Amazon and it's, it's like dye and you paint it on your teeth and it dries and doesn't hurt the saw any and it comes off with alcohol if you want to get it off later. But the advantage is when you then file on the saw, you can see, see which teeth you've cut. It just shows up like crazy. Let's file one in the middle here. Yeah, I don't know if you can, you can see it very well, but um, it helps you to fit, keep track of where you're going. When you're doing a saw like this, where your teeth are about a millimeter apart, you, you can't, it's really hard to, to know, well, did I do the last one? Did I miss one? Did I skip two? Because you need to do every other tooth. And so if you put the die cam on, then you can see exactly where you're, you've gone down the, down the tooth row. Uh, so it's very helpful. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so let's, let's look at cross cuts again, because they're, they are sharpened differently. And <clears throat> oh, that's the rip. What did I do with that one? Oh, there it is. Oh, one other thing. If you want to practice, this is what you need to do. Find a really junky old saw. And these aren't hard to find. Usually you can find um, some saw that looks like it never cut anything, um, typically for a buck or two at, at some flea market. Um, Anyway, you get one of those, take the handle off and use this for practice. Just stick it in your vise and wail away on it. But, so I will use this for our practice for cross, for cross cut. So I find a file that's the right size for this tube. So remember, I'm looking for one that goes up, not quite halfway up the side of the file, the teeth height. That looks about right. And I put it in the file holder. Okay. So, this is the back of the saw and I want to set the 
angle at about 15 degrees. That way. And then we're going to set the flame at 20. So I've set on this side the angle at, at 15. And then this side, we're going to set the angle at 20. At 20. So that we're going to be sharpening. in the gullet right there. So I set up and hold, hold the metal part level and the, the saw at the right angle and get the metal, edge of the metal should be parallel to the saw blade. We're going along and I'm going to do every other tooth. Hold this up because I think the camera will. No, oh, we're going to change cameras here. And you'll notice down here that I have sharpened every other tooth. You can see the rust in between the teeth that I've sharpened. Okay. And so then we're going to turn it around. And then we have to change to the other 20 degrees, the complementary 20 degrees. And we have to change this to the other 15 to get the pitch right. And then we go and sharpen in the gullets that we didn't sharpen the first time. Okay, we're not, we're not quite sharp yet, but we're close at that point. But what you do is you go down the whole tooth row and then go back and do the other side. And then you, and you wanna do, a, like I did, a couple of easy passes. You don't wanna try to get all the teeth totally sharp the first time through because you re really, there's a lot of shaping that has to be done in an old saw particularly something like this. Um, so any questions so far? Okay, everybody's unmuted. Yep, anybody uh, have a question? I, I guess I have a question on uh, I think in one of your earlier emails, you talked about the safety issue, and I think you said ah. you healed. Yeah, the, the, the books, the guys that do this all the time are, are swear by masks and um, uh, definitely safety glasses because the dust that accumulates on top of the saw, the, the file here is, is pretty crazy stuff. You don't want to inhale it. <clears throat> because um, it, it gets in your lungs and it's really bad for you. So there is that safety issue. If you're doing this, you're serious about it, I definitely would, <coughs> would wear a mask when you do it if any period of time. It's a little hard to talk though with a mask on, that's why I didn't wear one tonight. Um, you might also wonder what these crazy blocks were out here for. These are what you can do to replace this. These, these are made for cross cuts and they have the hand, the, the phlegm, the phlegm angle set with a curved phlegm. Wood. phlegm. And so you can drop the, there's an arrow for which end the handle goes to, which, end, which ends the operator goes to, 
you drop it over top and that tells you that's a 20 degree fling. And then you can keep your saw file at that parallel to that. Let me move it down here where you can see it. Parallel to the, to the gauge. So this helps you figure out, do that. So you don't need to use one of these gizmos, uh, one, of, one of these guys. You can replace it with your own homemade wooden ones. And then you can use, make a little block with a hole in it that's at, got a straight edge. You can see the straight edge at an angle. And that's your 15 degree rake. This happens to be a 14 degree rake one. You just stick the file in the hole and it has an arrow that points to the handle. So I got to put it around the other way. And then the, this saw is now set up for a 14 degree rake on a cross cut and you just put it in the file there and you hold it flat with this wooden block and then just push away. So if you want to make these, there's, there's plans for how to make this in some of the books. Um, a couple references that I should show you are, uh, okay. One is the keeping the cutting edge, setting and sharpening hand and power saws by Harold Payson. Now I have to say this book was published by a wooden boat magazine books back in the eighties, the seventies or eighties. But it's a really, if you ever come across it, it's a fabulous little book about how to sharpen um, saws with files. It, he even goes into circular saws. So that tells you how old the book is because um, none of us would think about trying sharpen carbide saws. Um, and then the perfect edge, which is um, Ron Hawk's book on how to sharpen, has a he, great big chapter on sharpening hand saws. It's very good. And got some of these hints in it about those little blocks and stuff. So, um, so those are two books that I recommend. Um, any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have one more. If I decide not to sharpen it myself and take it down to Rockler or someplace like that, what am I missing out on probably as far as quality of sharpening that they're gonna do or? Well, if, it depends on what kind of saw you have and how much you care about the quality of the sharpness. Um, I, if you have a saw that you're, you're new at this game and you have a saw that doesn't look or feel sharp, um, you might be smart to take it to um, either carbide saw does it, um, you can take it to Rockler, you can take it to Woodcraft. They have people that will take them out and bring them back in a week or two and um, they'll sharpen them up. But they use machines and you don't get as good a job as you do with a hand file. So what and, and if you don't believe this, um, there's some Peter, Paul Sellers, who's got all kinds of stuff on the hand tool wor work, is a huge fan of sharpening brand new saws and showing, he'll show you how, how much better they cut after he, you hand sharpen them than when they were sold. And that's really true. Um, you can do a much better job and you, it doesn't take much to learn how to do it if you start with a saw that's already got the teeth in the right shape and you will get, if you take, you send a saw out for professional sharpening locally, most of the time you'll get well-shaped teeth. They'll be accurately leveled. Um, and so you, it's easy to keep sharp a saw like that because you just take one, put the file in the groove to feel where it's going, take one uh, pass across it lightly and go to the next tooth and do that all the way down, turn the saw around, do it again the other way, and you're all done. And it's, it'll keep your saw sharp for you without having to have a lot of fooling around. So Ken, that, um, the first book you saw, you showed the Harold Payson one. Yeah. Um, Amazon, Amazon actually has that. Oh, wow. I, ju I just, I just ordered myself one and I'll have it tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> it's, that's it's good. I guess, I guess other people thought it was a good book too, so they kept it in print. They must have reprinted it. $6.99. Yeah. 
Okay. And I'm sure there are other good things. The, if you haven't looked at the videos that I recommended um, or the articles um, in the thing that I sent out earlier, that, those are great references. Um, a lot of it comes from Bad Axe Saws. I don't know if Bad Axe Tool Works. If you don't know Bad Axe, they make absolutely amazing um, custom saws. And they, they, if you have a saw that you would like to have tuned up to be really sharp, you can send it to Bad Axe and they'll rebuild the whole thing, tune it up. They'll take a rusty heap saw and turn it back into a nice shiny sharp one and give it back and send it back to you. I have no idea how much it costs, but you got two way shipping you're paying for, which is going to be close to a hundred bucks probably. Hi, Candace Roger. Can yeah. you uh, can you comment about uh, Japanese saws? Uh, I always um, find that the pull I got more control with a, uh, by pulling it than pushing yeah, a saw. Are they are, are they sharpened at the same angles and everything that you uh, talked about earlier in the day? No, they're, they're sharpened at totally different angles, and most of them are are impulse hardened, so they're not sharpenable. Um, it's, they're basically designed to be used until they're dull and then you replace the blade. Um, okay. It's, I don't know of any of them that any, anybody talks about sharpening because of the way they're hardened. Why, why would a rip Japanese saw and a rip American type saw be sharpened differently at a different angles and stuff? Oh, it, it, the angles on Japanese saws are really crazy. Their um, their the teeth are very pointy, and they're they're all sharpened in some even the rip saws in some thing that's closer to looking to the to the way you sharpen a, um, a crosscut saw with they're actually I think the teeth are sharpened with the the file pointed way up towards the tips of the teeth and at some crazy angles. Um, mm -hmm. And buy saw file, Japanese saw files, but there, I have none of the saws that I've ever had um, were sharpenable. Okay. Okay, we time to wrap it. So, any other questions? Any anybody have a question? So, Bill Tainer asked a question on chat. Did you say to file on the tooth that is set away from you? Yeah, you file on the um, back of the tooth pointed away from you. So that's, that's the handle end of the handle side of the, of the tooth. And the reason you do that is because the file is then pointing, cleaning up the right the edges that you want to have sharpened the most. It's particularly important on crosscut that you do it that way. We've recorded all but the first seven minutes. Oh, okay. Well, I got a report. We've recorded all but the first seven minutes. Um, so we're off and running. So we'll get that posted. Um, anybody else have anything they'd like to talk about? Um, one other thing. Um, I am definitely looking for people who would like to be presenters uh, for future events of the hand tool SIG. Um, we can do it from, from Bland's garage <laughs> um, shop, or we, we might even be able to do one from the, from the guild shop, but I don't want to take up shop hours if somebody else wants to use it. Um, and we need ideas for w what you'd like to see more of it with hand tools and I would love to have somebody decide that they'd like to try and take over the hand tool SIG and be the person, the moderator and the person who organizes the speakers and that kind of thing. So if any of you are interested and uh, have some good ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Nobody's raising their hand. <laughs> yeah, I can see, see that uh, as usual, we've we've come come a long way. So, okay. Um, well, thank you, and uh, hope you 
can try it out yourself. So Bill has another one. Suggestions on converting rip to cross cut or cross cut to rip. Um, I don't think it makes any difference. You can, um, what you want to do is make sure your tape, your, your teeth are shaped properly. Um, so you're going to file them to the proper shape. And then, because when they, what they do when they retooth the saw is they file off all the teeth and they go in and file a, a, the gullets in the right place and get the teeth at the right height. And then they decide whether they're going to sharpen it rip. And then they set it and then they sh decide to sharpen it rip or cross cut. So, but they're basically shaped um, with like, like a rip is filed straight across when you shape your teeth. But the difference would be the, if you're going to do cross cut, you'd, you'd bevel the, the file more. So put more rake on it. Okay. I think that's all the questions. Okay. So see you next time. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. All right, Thanks, Ken. Bye-bye.